you please be seated? Uh, could I welcome you warmly to church today? My name is Andrew Schmidt. I'm joined in leading the service by David Wright, Philip Escuya, and Andrew Goddard, who is our preacher this morning. Before I hand over to David, could I bring you a couple of items of important church news? Uh, you've received two uh, postcards in your package this morning as you came in. Uh, one is an invitation to our special service of thanksgiving to God for the life of the Queen and also a prayer for our future, uh, which is going to be held this Thursday at 9.30 a.m. I think it's important for us both to look back in thankfulness and to look forward uh, to, uh, to what will be a new era and to ask for God's blessing on that. Uh, so I think that will be a really worthwhile day. And of course, we'll be singing, we'll be hearing the bells, and we'll be raising the flag to full mast as the mourning period for the Queen comes to a conclusion. Uh, the other postcard you've received is for a concert that we're going to hold right here in the church on Saturday the 15th of October at 4.30. It features students from St. Catherine's School, and uh, I was actually at a concert at St. Catherine's last night, and I can tell you on that basis, the quality of the music will be excellent. Uh, we're hoping to engage the school community, obviously, in this, but uh, you can pick up as many of these postcards as you like if you feel that you could have people that you'd like to invite uh, to, uh, to hear classical music in the special uh, ambience of our church. So we'll be hearing more about that in the coming weeks, but uh, do please plan to come and uh, plan to invite a friend uh, if you have uh, such, a, such a person who you know would be interested. The other news I will leave for you on your weekly bulletin. Uh, confirmation service is this afternoon, so if you'd like to come back for a second church service today, it'd be very encouraging to our confirmators. Thanks, and I will hand over to David. Turning to our order of service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thus says the Lord, there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and Saviour. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are, are open, open, all desires desire known, and, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden, hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the commandments which God gave his people Israel. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all you have to do, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Honour your father and your mother. You shall do no murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet anything that is your neighbour's. Lord, have mercy on, on us, us and write your Lord law in, in our, our hearts heart. by your Holy Spirit. Almighty and eternal God, by, whom's, by whose spirit and whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive our prayer which we offer before you for the many different members of your holy church, that every one of them in his vocation and ministry may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated for our Bible readings? First reading comes from 1 Corinthians beginning at verse 12. Just 
as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we all were baptised by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honourable we treat with special honour, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each of you is part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles... Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Our psalm for today is Psalm 113. Uh, let us read this together in a call and response. I will read up to the colon, and uh, you respond with the rest of the sentence. <clears throat> Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. O sing praises you that are his servants. O praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed. From the rising of the sun to its going down. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations. And his glory is above the heavens. Who can be likened to the Lord our God? In heaven or upon the earth. Who has his dwelling so high? That condescends to look on things beneath. He raises the lowly from the dust. And lifts the poor from out of the dust. He gives them a place among the princes. Even among the princes of his he causes the barren woman to keep house and makes her a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke 11, beginning at verse 45. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, do you insult us also? Jesus replied, And you experts in the law, woe to you, because you load people down with burdens they can hardly carry and you yourselves will not lift one finger to help them. Woe to you, because you build tombs for the prophets, and it was your ancestors who killed them. So you testify that you approve of what your ancestors did. They killed the prophets, and you build their tombs. Because of this, 
God in his wisdom said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and others they will persecute. Therefore, this generation will be held responsible for the blood of the prophet that has been shed since the beginning of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible for all of it. Woe to you experts in the law, because you haven't taken away the key to knowledge. You yourselves, <coughs> you yourselves have not entered, and you have hindered those who were entering. When Jesus went outside, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began to oppose him fiercely and to besiege him with questions, waiting to catch him in something he might say. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us continue to stand as we declare our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became, became truly human. For our, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered death and was buried. On, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be able to share with you from this passage this morning. Uh, my name is Andrew, and let's pray before we do look at this together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather around your word this morning. We pray that you will speak to us uh, by your spirit, that you will bind us ever closer together as the body of Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you feel like an individual? There's a classic, uh, classic scene in the movie The Life of Brian by Monty Python. Uh, if you haven't seen it, let me first of all describe to you that Brian is a very ordinary man who is mistaken for the Messiah and crowds of people begin following him everywhere. He gets fed up with this and at one point turns around and says to them all, you've got to think for yourselves, you're all individuals. The crowd respond in unison, yes, we're all individuals. He then again says, you're all different. And they reply as one, yes, we are all different, except for one lone voice that calls out in dissent, I'm not. So, unity is good at times, but diversity is also good. We are all individuals, but there are so many ways that the things that we belong to in our world bind us together. We want to be individuals, but sometimes there's also a pull to conform to whichever group we may be members of. And when we're part of a group, 
are we in danger of, of losing what makes each of us special in the first place? Well, in today's passage, we see that each of us has a very important part to play as members of the body of Christ, as members of the church. And in this passage, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the first half of the chapter, first of all, we see that it is God's spirit that binds us together. What, what stronger binding could there be? Secondly, we see that each of us is a member of this body. No one can say that they're too unimportant to be part of it. Thirdly, no one can say that someone else is too unimportant or that they themselves are, are indispensable. And fourthly, we see that as members of the body of Christ, each of us truly does have an important part to play. Let's first look at what it is then that binds us to together, the Spirit of God. It says there in verse 13, For we are, we're all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free. This is saying that when we are baptized by the Spirit, we are washed clean internally in our hearts by God. And this is happening in a way that cuts through every social barrier that there could be. The big social barriers at the time of that Paul was writing to the church in Corinth were whether people were Jews or non-Jews, whether people were slaves or whether they were free. And we know that everyone was welcome to be part of the church. Everyone was welcome to be part of the body of Christ. This is true unity in diversity. It's a phrase, unity in diversity, that often gets thrown around. But what does it really mean? Well, it really depends on what it is that's uniting people in the first place. The basis for unity of a group, it can be strong or it can be quite weak. It can be purely geographical. It can be down to interest. It can be down to education. It can be down to social status. It can be down to football team as well. But as a church, what is our basis for unity? We know what binds us together, but what is our basis? Well, in the letter to Jude, from Jude, verse 3, it says, I feel compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. This is exactly what Paul believed as well. Our unity is on the faith that is passed down from generation to generation and that we contend for today as well. As Paul says later in the letter to the Corinthians, in chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, he says, For I received what I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. What a wonderful basis for unity this is. And how much more wonderful is it that the Spirit of God is the one that has put us together in this body. So everyone who has this faith has been baptized by the Spirit and is united to Christ. But the Spirit does even more than that. It doesn't just dump us all together in a group and see whether we sink or swim together. It also sustains the body. It says there in the second half of verse 13, we are all given the one spirit to drink. Have you ever traveled to a different part of Australia or even the world, tasted the water and thought that it tasted different? It tasted odd, not like what you were expecting. To the locals, it probably seemed completely normal, completely tasteless. But to others, you can tell now, some water is better for, the, for you, better for you than others. Some will actually make you sick. I was once talking to uh, a scientist who did work with ultra-pure water. And she told me that if you only ever drank ultra-pure water, you would actually get sick and die because it did not have the necessary minerals in it to sustain us. The Spirit of God is what we drink together that nourishes us, that sustains us. We all drink it. 
Sometimes it is like the water we drink every day and we forget how integral it is, how important it is. But at other times when we're tired, when we're thirsty, then we see just how much we need it and how wonderful that all of us are sustained in this way as the one body. So we are fundamentally united by the Spirit. We're sustained by the Spirit. But even so, in verse 14, it says that we are not one homogenous whole, but many parts. We are all members. The original meaning of the word member actually comes from the word for limb. You used to be able to talk about your body's members talking about your limbs. How important to the body are your arms and your legs? And so when the Bible talks about us being parts of the body of Christ, that is what it is talking about. Recently, I became uh, a member of a gym down the road. Now, the only thing that I have to do as a member of that gym is pay my membership fees. There's nothing... I have no obligations, particularly to the other members there. I don't need to get to know them. They don't need to get to know me. In fact, to be a member of that gym, I don't even have to ever go. I just have to keep paying the fees. But to be a member of the body of Christ is so much more. It is to be a limb in this church. So each of us is a member of this body. You if your faith is in Jesus, are a member of this expression of the worldwide body of Christ that we have here at St. Jude's. And its parts are diverse. We read in verse 15, Now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If every part were like every other, it wouldn't be a body, would it? It wouldn't be sustainable. It would not be what God has intended. But instead of that, it is just as God wants, us, wants it to be. In verse 18, it says, But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. And so, if you're ever tempted to think that you are an unimportant part of the body, uh, um, a part of the body that isn't necessary, Well, read these verses and know that God has placed you in the body with your particular skills, your particular gifts, to serve the body and be nourished by it. Everyone has something to contribute. So it's great encouragement that each of us here is an equal member of the body of Christ. But this chapter, it also encourages us to see that everyone else is Everyone else who has faith in Jesus is a member of the same body. Everyone who walks through this door, who professes faith in Jesus, is instantly a member of that body as well. As we see there in verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. So just as no body part can say, I'm not needed, to another body part, None of us can say to another part of this church, you are not needed. Some parts, as we read here, are stronger. Some are physically weaker. Some are hidden. Some are seen more. Uh, Some parts of our bodies, we never actually see ourselves, but we know that from our own bodies, all are essential. All are important. And we read here that all are given equal honour by God. God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lack it. Now, when it talks about him giving greater honour to some parts, he's not saying that some members of the church should be seen or not seen and not heard, or that some members of the church should be hidden away for whatever reason. He's definitely not saying that people of a particular age group, even crying babies, should be hidden away because they're unpresentable. Every part of the body of Christ is honoured, not just by the rest of the body, but by God. 
Now, the Roman society that Paul was writing to here in Corinth, it definitely had a social pecking order. It was a very stratified world of honourable elites and then the dishonourable. People who didn't qualify for reasons of birth or lack of wealth or lack of education. One group was definitely seen as more presentable and the other as less. This had spilled over even into the thinking of the church in Corinth and this needed to change. We need to make sure that this kind of thinking never takes hold in our expression of the body here in Randwick as well. All parts of the body are to care for each other. That's how we make sure that we remember that we are united and that we're equal members. In verse 26, it says, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. If I go out and eat a slice of cheesecake, I know that my mouth will feel particularly honoured at that point. And I know that the rest of my body is going to go along with that. It's not going to complain that it wasn't honoured. If I take it too far and eat too many slices of cheesecake, well, then my body will suffer, won't it? And the, all of my body, body will suffer along with it. And if it suffers to the extent where it needs to be taken to a doctor, well, then my whole body will be involved in that process. If one part of St. Jude's is suffering, we should all suffer with it. If one part is rejoicing, then how wonderful that we all get to rejoice with it as well. This, this implies that we know what is happening in the body, doesn't it? I'm not saying that each of us needs to share every detail of our lives with everyone else. But it's saying here that we have connections with each other. That on the whole, we have the kind of deep relationships where we are truly able to care for one another. You can only truly care for one another and celebrate with someone when you truly know them, can't you? This is an encouragement for us to have those relationships. And I think it's an encouragement that we can, that we don't need to be afraid of being known by other parts of the body. Just as parts of members of our bodies aren't afraid of being known by the others. And so as members of this body, we see lastly that each of us truly does have a part to play. Verse 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. This is an amazing list of gifts, a diverse list of gifts. And there are a few things that we need to remember about this list as we seek to apply it to our context here. First of all, these are not ordered in terms of importance or in terms of grandeur, but they're ordered in terms of the chronological order that they were required for planting and growing the church in Corinth. Also, this is by no means an exhaustive list. We see examples in other parts of the Bible and particularly in the New Testament other gifts that people have as well. And these aren't necessarily gifts that we should expect here at St. Jude's as they were particularly needed for the planting of the church in Corinth. But what we can take away from this is that there were gifts for planting, for teaching, and for growing and encouraging each other as well. And we know that each of them is important, equally important, and that everyone has some gift to share because that gift is given to them by God. Spiritual gifts are called spiritual gifts, not because they make the person particularly impressive, but because they're given by God. If your gift is in sharing music, then that is a gift given by God when you use it for the building up of the body. If, you, if your gift is in prayer, then we know it's given to you by God when you use it for praying for the body. There are so many ways that we can serve each other, that we can look after each other, that we can nourish each other and be nourished by each other just like a body. And so 
we need to think about whether we uh, need to repent of any ways that we have ignored parts of the body or thought that we ourselves are not integral parts of the body. Of thinking that this body doesn't need me, I'm unimportant. Or that this body doesn't need that person over there, they're unimportant or they don't particularly fit in. If we all really are part of this body, how are we going to express that? How are we going to express it with people that we don't know that well? With people who may be new members of the body? It's, it's easy for us to think that we're all pretty good at this. Uh, I'm, it's very easy for me to think that this is a welcoming congregation, especially if I feel welcomed at it. But what am I doing to welcome others? When did you last welcome someone to church? When did you last thank someone for serving you in a particular way? Talk to someone from a, a different background to your own. Especially when did you last rejoice with someone who is honoured? or suffer with someone who is suffering? These are questions that I need to ask myself uh, as well. But I can know that together we are bound by the Spirit of God. We're sustained by the Spirit of God. That we are all members of the body. We all have a part to play. And each of us is integral and important because God has placed us together. So if this is your church, then according to this passage, it needs you. I'm not saying that any one person is indispensable, but it needs you because God has put you here as, an import, as such an important part as someone's hand or someone's foot, as much as someone needs that hand or that foot. God has put you in the body to be nourished by it and to nourish it with his help as well. Let's now pray. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you that you, in your great wisdom, have put together the body of your, um, the body of your Son, the body of your church, giving greater honour to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division, so that we can all have equal co concern for each other, we pray that when one of us suffers, we will all suffer along with that person. When one of us is honoured, we will all rejoice, knowing that you are the one to whom we give glory. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand for our offertory hymn for today, number 245, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. We will omit verse 5.
come now to a time of prayer. Let us pray for all people and the church throughout the world. Most loving God, you have given us this new day in which to serve you and delight in you. By your spirit, help us to do so, not as slaves, but as your precious children, called to be sisters and brothers of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we gather and pray this morning. Dear Lord, in the goodness of your constant love, be with the people of Pakistan as they face devastating floods. At this time of great loss of lives, homes and crops, we pray that they may find consolation in their sorrow, strength as they seek shelter, and safety and courage to carry on. May we be filled with compassion to reach out in love. Heavenly Father, you have warned us through your Son Jesus that those who follow him may be oppressed and abused because of their faith, we pray for all those experiencing persecution, asking you to uphold and protect them. Give them courage to stay faithful to you and be present in their time of trouble. Generous God, we thank you for the provision of St Jude's Early Learning Centre, for the dedicated staff and the excellent facilities. We pray that the link between church and the centre will be strengthened providing opportunities for both children and parents to hear your message of love and salvation. Lord, we are so thankful that we can call you friend. We pray that as our friendship group meets each month, members will not only deliver, develop earthly friendships, but will deepen their friendship with you. Almighty and ever-living God, we give wisdom and understanding to, to the members Almighty and everlasting God, give wisdom and understanding to the members of Synod. Teach them in all things to seek first your honour and glory. May they perceive what is right, have courage to pursue it, and grace to accomplish it. Lord, you send out your spirit to touch the hearts of all people so that they may believe in you and in Jesus whom you sent. Look kindly on the confirmation candidates, Toby, Aaron, Caleb and Simon, as they listen to your voice. Open their hearts to your spirit and bring to fulfilment the good work you have begun in them. We turn to our yellow sheets. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the ways of righteousness and peace and guide their rulers in wisdom and justice for the tranquility and good of all. Bless especially your servant Charles R. King, his representatives and ministers, especially remembering our state MP Marjorie O'Neill, his parliaments and all who exercise authority in this land. Grant that they may impartially administer justice, restrain wickedness and vice and uphold integrity and truth. We beseech you to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael said our bishop, that by their life and doctrine, they may set forth your true life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people, give your heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that they may receive your word with meek hearts and due reverence and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We ask you in your goodness, Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or an, any other adversity, thinking of all those named in our prayer journal. We also bless your holy name for all your servants who have died in the faith of Christ. Give us grace to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of your heavenly kingdom. 
Grant this, Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen and comfort you. But first, let us make a humble confession of our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge with shame the sins we have committed by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are heartily sorry, sorry for all our misdoings. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father, for your Son, Son our Lord Jesus Christ's Christ sake. Forgive us for all that is past, and grant and that we may here hereafter, hereafter serve and please you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our next hymn, number 576, O oh, for a Closer Walk with God. We'll again omit the fifth verse. the words of assurance for those who truly turn to Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. If anyone sins we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the perfect offering for our sins. Lift up your hearts. He lift, lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, to give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right and our bounden duty 
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord, mighty creator and eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, O Lord Most High. Let us pray together. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trust in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs on your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. All glory to you, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we who receive these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. those who are joining us online, join with me as I receive uh, the bread and the wine to remember Jesus' body and blood shed for us. I take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for me and feed on him in my heart by faith. Thanksgiving. drink this in remembrance of Christ's blood that shed for me.
let us pray. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done, done on earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, us Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our, our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation but to deliver us, us from evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom the power, and the, power and, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we heartily thank you that you graciously feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and thus assurance of your favour and goodness towards us, and that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your eternal kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of your dear Son. And we humbly beseech you, Heavenly Father, so to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as you have prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.